Hello and welcome everyone. So this is a request tutorial for a waterfall. And now uh, we will get started with this straight away. So first thing that we need is a texture. Now I made this texture inside game um, a long time ago. So I have been uh, experimenting with waterfall but it's only now that after this request I was able to actually use this to make the waterfall. So I'll upload this texture in the link in the um, description of the video. So we'll close that. So once we have, uh, once we have this texture, what you want to really do with this is, so uh, you'll right click once you have imported this in here, and you'll create a material. Now inside the material, uh, what we need to do here is, so here is the texture down here, the waterfall texture one that I have, and the other two things you need is a particle color and a vertex color. So you can actually search for a particle color by right clicking and then bring that in down here. And you can press V and left click to bring in a vertex color. Now the the um, the the top value from the vertex color goes into A into a multiply, and the top value from the particle color goes into B from the multiply. And then this multiply um, I connected to another multiply where uh, this I connected into the emissive, and I added a scalar parameter. You can press S and left click to add a scalar parameter, which allows us to adjust how emissive our material will actually be. And the second thing I have is the texture down here. So the texture, the, the main value, goes into the base color, and then I'm using a multiply node. So the alpha from the color, the particle color, goes into B, and the alpha from the texture sample goes into A. So what particle color really does is it allows us to adjust these values inside the particle system itself. And then this multiply, I am connecting it to another multiply and using the opacity node, uh, again pressing the uh, pressing S and left click. And then we have the, um, I have connected that into B, so by, uh, by changing the value of this so we can control the opacity which will allow us to have bright or um, slightly less bright water. Now if you were looking to add um, refraction, you can actually add that and the material of course is translucent and make sure you check two-sided so you can see it from both sides. So if you wanted to add um, refraction, a simple way of doing that would be you would add a funnel and then you would press L and left click you would connect this into alpha and then you would choose two scalar parameters in A and B. So a value of 1.5 and 1 and then you connect this into re refraction that should work. But for this type of waterfall, I think we are okay without these. So I'm just going to delete this. So here is the material, just um, so you guys have one more look at it. And we will move on to making the next material. So this material forms the base of our water texture that we will have in the waterfall. So now the next material will actually form the, um, so it'll, it'll give a smoky effect, so kind of like a water smoke that comes down with it, um, just falls along with the water, and the same materials we'll use here on the ground to give this effect where the waves are actually um, going out and the water is spreading. So for the next material, what you need is, um, so once again, we need a, uh, a particle color, we need a um, vertex color, a particle color, so we'll multiply them again together, so the top one goes into A, and this top one goes into B, and this again I'm connecting to the um, to another multiply, and we, get, we are controlling the emissive with a scalar parameter, and this goes into the emissive color. Now the next thing we need, we need a radial gradient exponential. We can search for this by just typing radial here, and there we have it. Then we'll bring in another scalar parameter to control the density, which controls um, how much of this um, circle actually becomes visible. And this gives us a nice effect to go with the waterfall um, that will follow as the water goes down, and it gives a nice effect to it, taking out the rough edges. And then this again we will uh, connect into the A, and the alpha from the particle color goes into the um, B down here, and this goes into the opacity. Now, once we have these two materials, we can go ahead and make a new particle system. Now, for the particle system, what I will do is, um, I'm just going to open the one I have already made, and I will say out the values one by one, and what you need to add to get this result. So here, as you can see, I have four um, different um, particle emitters. So I'll just, uh, I'll take out the other ones, and I'll just show the first one down here. So the first one is basically the texture of the water that is basically um, 
the material that we made that is basically just falling. So for this, what you need to do is uh, you need to click uh, first. First of all, um, you can use uh, if you don't have to use GPU sprites, but it's normally more more um, efficient. Um, it might help with the um, with the FPS and the lag. So it might be a better option to use the GPU sprites, but you won't need too many of these. So it might still be possible uh, if you were to just use a CPU sprite. Now in the required, what we will do is. Uh, we'll also create uh, material instances from this. So for the first material uh, instance we create, what this allows us is that we can manually adjust the emissive and the opacity values since we made the um, scalar parameters. So in the first material instance, the emissive value I'm using is 0 0.36 and the opacity value is 0 0.5. So you need to select this and then find the, uh, the first material instance and select that down here. Now the next thing we need is um, the spawn. So in the spawn I'm using a value of 20 in the minimum and maximum. Now all of these values uh, can vary depending on the length of your waterfall and how wide it is. So you might have to adjust all of these values. The lifetime I'm using a value of 5 and 5. So in my scene, as you can see, so my lifetime matches just nicely. So as soon as it reaches around here, um, the waterfall finishes anyway. So my lifetime is just um, exactly what I need, which is a lifetime of 5 seconds. The initial size, I am using an initial size of 50 all along this. The initial velocity on the X and the Y, I am using a value of 50 each. So what this allows us is um, this allows this curve to happen. So um, rather than having the water come down straight, it's coming down at a curve. So the velocity of 50 is causing it to cause this curve. If you wanted more of a curve, you could increase the value on the X and it would give you more of a curve. Or if your water was falling the other way, you could use a value of minus 50. And then I'm using a value of 3 and minus 3 on the Y. And what this is um, allowing to happen is it's allowing the, this, um, this movement. So it seems like not all water is coming in the same direction. S um, some of it goes right and some of it goes left. Uh, would add, say, more natural look to the texture of this. And then the next thing we have is a size by life. So if you notice what's happening here is um, the water starts off small and as it comes down, the size is increased. So here in the um, life multiplier distribution constant curve, there are two points, the point of zero and one. You can obviously, if you can't, uh, if you don't see any of these here, you can right click and search for these manually. So inside the size by life, at say, at zero seconds, the value is 0 0.5 on x, y, and z. And at one second, it increases to a value of two. So the particles get bigger. Then I am using an initial color to give it a white color. Um, since we added a particle color in our um, original material, so you will need an initial color to um, get it to have some type of color. Then I have a um, constant acceleration value, which kind of uh, makes it come, to, uh, which makes this come down faster, so it looks more like water. Now what we'll do is we'll right click on this um, on this particle emitter, we'll go to emitter and then duplicate emitter. Once you have duplicated, the main things that you want to change is I'm going to disable this one and enable this one. So this is the secondary thing that gives a nice look to the water. So the main thing will change is in the required, we'll change the material to the uh, radial gradient material that we made down here. And the values I'm using for this in the um, in the so in the density and the emissive is both one, but you can adjust these values to make the water look how you want it to look. So we'll change the required the material itself and in the spawn I have reduced it to 10 because I don't need um, as many as these as the water particles. And then um, everything else I believe is pretty much the same with these. Now the last two things I have, so if I um, disable this and this and enable these two, because these two share the same um, properties. So the last thing is um, when the water hits the ground, so what's happening is um, these things spawn here, they go outwards and they get bigger um, as they go out. Let me just see. Yep, so they get bigger and this gives an effect that the water is hitting and it's actually spreading out. So, so the waves are actually going out. So what is what I'm using is... Um, so I made another material instance from the uh, waterfall and the main material 
And in this, I'm using a value of 0.3 and 0.2. And then inside here, so in the required, you would choose the new material instance. In the spawn, I'm using a value of 20. In the lifetime, I'm using a value of 15 minimum and maximum. Initial size, I'm using 25 all the way. Color over life. And inside here, I'm using the alpha over life uh, module. And what this allows us is that, as you guys can see, as it spreads out, it fades into nothing. So at a value of 0 seconds, um, the value is 1. So at 0 seconds, the value is 1. So it's fully, uh, it's fully visible. And at a value of 1 seconds, the... Uh, sorry, at 1 second, it's the, a value of 0. So it fades out completely. And then I have an initial location, which is um, 220 on the X and 200. Um, on the X down here. So what this allows us uh, is basically a, a box in which they randomly spawn. And then um, this allows a bit of variation on the X axis. And on the Y axis, again, I have a little bit of variation with a value of 10 and minus 10. Again, you might need to adjust this based on uh, where your waterfalls. And the value on the Z is minus 1000. Now this is minus 1000 because the height of my water is actually uh, about 1000. So I just I just wanted to make sure that my water actually um, um is at the so wherever the water collides that is where these particles are spawned just on on the surface of my water, so you might need to um adjust this value based on um how high your water falls, and then the lock axis I'm locking them on this Z so they are only facing this way so I don't have any particles that are facing the um on the X axis or the Y axis as that would um not look very good for this. And I'm using a size by life module again. So what I'm doing is um, at a value of 0 seconds, I'm getting to start them off at a, a value of 1 on X, Y, and Z. And at 5 seconds, I am increasing that to 10 seconds, so they get bigger as the waves spread out. And then I'm using an acceleration to get them to move and spread out. So on the X and the Y, in the max, I'm using a value of 1.5. And in the minimum, I'm using a value of minus 1.5. And both of these share the same um, same attributes. So now I'm going to enable both of these. And here comes the water. So all together, what this forms is a nice looking, um, nice looking waterfall material. Now there is one last thing that um, I did, which is I made a blueprint. So you can right click, create a blueprint actor class. And then I call the pp underscore waterfall. And then inside the um, inside the viewport, what I have happening is uh, I just dragged in the uh, waterfall material, and I went to the starter contents, and into particles, I right clicked and duplicate the um, the smoke material, and I copied and pasted this into the waterfall along with the material that it uses. So the particle system and the material. And I made a few adjustments to these, which we will go over now. So inside the, um, the smoke material, first we look at the material. Uh, you can find the smoke material in the materials tab. And you can... Um, so we're not in here. So in, inside particles, you go to materials. And you can right click and... Um, uh, duplicate this and copy and paste this to your new location and then we'll adjust this material just a little bit so here um, what i'm really uh doing is, so here's my setup down here so the main thing i did is uh make it two-sided and make this two-sided foliage so what this does is uh it allows us it allows the um the smoke to be to be white on both sides because if i was to take away this um sub value down here so I added a multiply and I connected that to subsurface and uh, with a value of 1 in the scalar parameter. So if I was to take this off, what would happen is, in fact, if I take this down to 0, what you will notice is um, one side will be bright and one side will not be as bright. You can't see that here, but in the um, in your scene, that's what that um, does. So by adding this value, what we are essentially doing is uh, making sure it's bright in both of the sides. And then once again, I have a multiplier here and I'm controlling the emissive value with this. Now once you have this um, inside the particle system itself for the smoke. So what I did is, um, so I'll just go over them quickly. 
In the required, I'm of course using the material that um that I edited myself. In the spawn, it's two. Lifetime, it's five and seven. Initial size, three hundred and two hundred on the X. Initial velocity, um, twenty five. So what I did here is um I think I changed the initial velocity and acceleration because uh, the older smoke was just going up on the axis and I wanted it to kind of go out more sideways than going up. So in the max x I did 25, in the minimum x I did minus 25, same with the y, and in the z I did 10 and 10, so I only want this smoke to go up and not down, so I did not do any minus 10 down here. In the acceleration again, same value, so 25 and minus 25 on the x and the y, and in the z I did 1.5 and a value of 1, because I do want it to go up slightly. Color over life, we can leave it as it is, it's quite nice. Initial rotation, we can leave that. Size by life, and everything else should be fine. And then um, inside the blueprint, so inside the BP, I added about four of these um, smoke particle systems, just around the area of impact where the water hits, which gives us a nice effect, as you can see in real time, that um, it looks quite um, realistic as the water hits the ground, there's smoke and there's waves obviously going outwards. So all in all, I'm um, playing with these values, you can achieve, achieve this result, and I'm going to simulate, and you'll notice the um, sound cue uh, sound that I'm using. So the water starts coming down. And if I was to turn um, my left ear towards it, you can see the sun goes into the left uh, into the left ear, and the sun goes into the right ear. So here I'm using a sound cue. So um, I got this uh, soundtrack from uh, freesounds.org, where you can get free sounds from. And if I play this, and I um, this sound was about two minutes long, so I edited uh, edit, I edited the sound inside um, Audacity and made it a looping sound. So now um, you can't tell too much difference if the sound was to constantly play. And then I'm using a sound cue, so as I move away, the sound gets slower and lower and eventually completely fades out, which gives us a uh, realistic game effect. And I did make a um, tutorial on sound cue, so you can um, you can check it out if you like. And then um, so this was the main tutorial. I hope you guys found this useful. And just a an um, over cap, so my blueprint consists of the sound cue. So the um, the inner capsule is where the sound will be inside, and the outer capsule is where it will start to fade out, and outside this there will be no sound at all. So the blueprint uses the main waterfall material with the four um, four particle emitters, the water, the smoky water effect, and then the two ground effects, and then four particle systems of the smoke. And here's the smoke material, I'll leave this on the screen for a bit, just in case you guys miss something. And here is the, let me just, uh, the particle system itself. And I'll just go over the smoke water, so the radial gradient material, this is what it looks like. And then finally, the waterfall texture which I will um, upload and you can download that from the, um, fr um, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. So this is it guys, I hope you guys found this useful. I actually, um, I actually really love doing this because this is something new that I've discovered and um, I did not know that waterfall could actually look this good with just a simple texture. So I hope you guys found this useful and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.